Hi there! I'm Sir Cal and welcome to my channel. Today, I'll teach you what's theoretical framework and conceptual framework because in the past few months, I received a lot of questions coming from students asking how can they create a conceptual framework for their research papers but i think the question there is do they really know what is conceptual framework or even theoretical framework because i think if you know what is the use of this you will be able to know how to create or to choose what theory to use in your research paper that is why i created this video for to guide you and to explain to you when and what is the use of conceptual framework along with theoretical framework and I know you're ready so let's begin but before we explain or even define what's conceptual and theoretical framework I think it's deemed necessary for us to know first the meaning and to understand the meaning of a framework because according to Merriam dictionary framework it is the structure of ideas in Filipino balangkas what is the sequence of the information, the data, or the variables in that given topic? Ano yung pagkakasunod-sunod? Ano yung itsura? Ano yung information? Ano yung connection ng mga ideya sa nasabing usapin na yan? Okay, and since we are talking about research paper, there are two prominent structures, I mean frameworks, na ginagamit. The first one is theoretical framework and the other one is conceptual framework. Okay, and most of the time, ang nagagamit sa mga paaralan, especially sa senior high school, sa junior high school, and even in college, ang mas prevalent or ang mas nagagamit na framework ay yung conceptual framework. Pero ano ba kasi ang pagkakaiba nilang dalawa? Or magkaiba ba talaga sila? Alamin natin. When a study is designed under a theoretical framework, you as the researcher is expected to look for a formal theory and use that as a primary means of understanding and investigating your research problem. Ibig sabihin, kung ang research mo ay gagamit ng theoretical framework, ikaw ngayon ay maghahanap ng isang formal na theory na siyang tutulong sa'yo kung paano mo ilalahad at uunawain ang mga detalye at kung paano mo sasagutin ang mga research problems na nilagay mo sa study mo. Let's have an example. Let's say ang problem mo ay bakit kaya kumukunti na lang ang umuorder online or bakit hesitant ang ibang taong mag-order online. So, babalikan natin bakit kaya ang isang tao ay hindi na nag-order online. So, maybe may isip natin na there's something to do. It has something to do rather with their satisfaction. Baka naman kasi hindi sila nasasatisfy tuwing nag-order sila online. Okay, and one example or one theory which can help you in explaining that phenomena or that problem is yung paggamit mo ng customer satisfaction theory. Ibig sabihin, hahanapin mo ngayon, babasahin mo, ano ba ang customer satisfaction theory? Because this customer satisfaction theory, itong theory na to ang magbibigay sa iyo ng direksyon kung paano mo ngayon ilalahad yung mga factors. Okay? Ito yung magbibigay sa iyo ng direksyon kung paano mo ipapakita sa readers mo kung bakit yung lumiliit na yung numero ng mga bumibili online. Okay? Ibig sabihin, paggamit ka ng theoretical framework, kukuha ka lang ng isang theory na siyang maglalahad ng mga ideya ng paano mo i-research yung problem na meron ka sa study mo. Okay, so dapat ito ay isang formal theory. Kaya nga sa theoretical framework. Minsan, ginagamit din ang theoretical framework upang patunayan or biglang katuturan kung ang theory ba, kung isang teorya ba ay factual or may katotohanan o ito ay mananatiling kuro-kuro lamang. Okay? So it's like you are validating a theory using yung research problem mo. Okay? While 
If your research will use conceptual framework, you are going to include one or more formal theories as well as other concepts and empirical findings from a literature. And it is actually used to show the relationships among these ideas and how they relate to the research study. Ibig sabihin, kung ang research paper mo naman ay gagamit ng conceptual framework, maghahanap ka naman ngayon ng samutsaring theory at mga concepts. Okay, na magpapakita ng connection or ipapakita nito yung connection ng mga ideyang ito tungkol or patungkol sa research study mo. Ibig sabihin, kung sa theoretical framework, isang theory lang ang gagamitin mo. Sa conceptual naman, iba-ibang concepts, iba-ibang uh, theory na siyang tutulong sa'yo kung paano mo ilalahad naman yung research problem. Conceptual framework is commonly used in a qualitative research, especially under social and behavioral sciences, because one theory cannot fully address the phenomenon being studied. Ibig sabihin, kapag social problem kasi specifically it concerns the interconnection, interrelatedness of individuals and their social and emotional well-being and so on and so forth. Hindi sapat na isang theory lang ang magbibigay linaw ng mga ito. So dapat gumamit ka or tumingin ka ng iba-ibang concepts as well as theories to better explain yung research problem mo. For example, kung ang problem natin ay yung bakit kaya may mga bata na hindi uh, nakikinig sa kanilang lecture. Whenever there is a class, may mga estudyante hindi nakikinig. So, maaari nating tignan yung theory ng selective at attention theory. Sabi nga ni Donald Broadbent, may mga tao kasi na filter daw nila yung kanilang pinapakinggan. Let's say yung isang bata, kung ayaw niya yung a topic, hindi niya lubos na pinag-isipan or pakikinggan yung sinasabi sa kanya. There is a filter, filter na pinipili lang niya kung ano yung gusto niyang pakinggan. As opposed naman sa sinabi ni Trisman sa attenuation theory na according to him naman, or her, sorry, um, hindi naman sa pinipili ng estudyante or ng isang tao ang kanyang papakinggan. It's just that may mga bagay lang na focus na yung kanyang attention. Okay, pero kapag tinanong mo naman yung taong yan, kahit hindi siya na-concentrate habang pinapakinggan yung lecture, for example, um, ay may maaalala pa rin siya. Yun nga lang, hindi niya finocus yung kanyang attention sa pakikinig sa teacher niya or sa isang taong nagsasalita. Pero may maaalala pa rin siya. Yun nga lang, um, yung attention nga niya ay mas binigay niya sa ibang bagay. Kumbaga, hindi sa uh, nagsasalita or kumakausap sa kanya. So there, maliban sa selective attention span na binanggit ko, maaari din nating tignan yung ibang factors. Yung environment. Baka naman kasi maingay yung environment na kinanuroonan ng isang estudyante na siyang nag influence sa kanya upang hindi makinig ng maayos. Okay? Kasi nga, let's sabi nating maingay. Or maaring may ibang ginagawa yung isang estudyante kaya hindi siya makapag-focus. Yung attention niya ay nahati sa dalawa. Okay? So, mga ganong factors. Kaya naman, mahalaga na gamitin natin yung conceptual framework Okay, kung ang study natin ay may kinalaman sa social studies, specifically kapag yung study mo ay qualitative study. Okay? So, there you have it. Thank you for watching this video. I hope na nakatulong ako upang malinawan ka kung ano nga ba ang theoretical framework at conceptual framework at kung kailan natin dapat gamitin ang dalawang framework na ito. Okay, so I hope to see you again next time. Take care. Bye.